Please remember that the complete information for the class that you are about to view is at elithecomputerguy.com. Not only do we have our videos there, but we have part lists, diagrams, pictures, and even complete code examples. So if you are watching this video and you want more information, please go to elithecomputerguy.com. Welcome back. As you know, I am Eli the Computer Guy, and in today's class, we are going to be doing basic text formatting with HTML. So as I've shown you before with HTML, you use tags to say what certain text is, and so we are going to be formatting the text within the web page document using HTML tags today. Now, it is important to understand, as I talked about before, that HTML is basically the, the building blocks of a website. So think about it as the beams, the floor, the foundation of a website, and then you you use other coding languages uh, to make the website actually be responsive, be pretty, all of those types of things. So when we think about formatting text with HTML, basically all we're doing is we're laying out what type of text uh, that the web page is going to be presenting. Uh, so things such as headings. So you have H1 all the way through H6. And basically these are for things like titles of a page. So if you have a title of a page, and then you have a chapter in a page, and then you have a section in a page, all the way six levels down, you would use something called H tags. So basically these are these are titling tags uh, for the content that's going to be in a page. Uh, then you use uh, P tags. So P tags are the actual paragraph. So whenever you're going to be writing out a paragraph on the page, uh, then you would be using the P tag. Uh, beyond that, what I'm going to be showing you to do today is things like how to bold. So if you want to bold uh, a certain word or set of words, I'll show you how to use that tag. I'll show you how to italicize. I'll show you how to underline. And I'll show you how to do a line break. But it's important to understand in the model modern world, uh, when you're looking at actually formatting uh, text uh, to any larger degree than what I'm going to be showing you today, you would use a language called CSS. So if it's CSS, it's called a cascading style sheets. Uh, that's what you'll be using uh, in order to modify the size of fonts or to modify the colors of fonts or to modify other visual aspects of your website, basically how the fonts lay out, spacing, that type of thing. You would actually use CSS for that. So HTML, again, uh, uh, what you're going to be using is you're going to be using HTML for the broad brushes of what the website is going to look like. Again, you're going to be saying what what the, where the heading tags are, what size those heading tags are. Uh, you're going to be saying where the paragraphs are. You're going to be bolding uh, some words. You're going to be underlining some words. So you're going to be doing very basic things uh, using HTML. And then when you want to make it uh, more pretty, more sophisticated, then you will go to CSS uh, to do that additional tweaking to things like fonts. So today I'm going to show you this basic formatting in text with HTML, uh, it should be pretty easy for you. So as with everything in HTML, basically when you're going to be doing basic formatting of text, all you have to do is use tags. Again, you open a tag and you close a tag. Always make sure you close the tag. But beyond that, everything else is basically memorization, knowing what tag to use. Uh, so why don't we go over to the computer? Um, I will show you how these basic formatting tags work because that'll probably be easier than just simply trying to talk at you. So here we are back at my demonstration machine. Again, I'm using a MacBook Pro, but all you need is a text editor to write this basic HTML code. So if you're in the Windows world, you can use Notepad. If you're in the Mac world, you can use Text Edit like I have. If you're in the Linux world, you can use G-Edit or Nano or Vim or whatever else it is you want. Uh, the main thing is, is make sure when you save the file, make sure you save the file as a .htm or a .html file um, that shows the computer that this is a, a web document. So then when you double click on it, uh, it will try to open it with a web browser versus just opening it like a text editor and you getting to see this. Uh, now beyond that, um, all I've done today is I've written out all the, the basic HTML tags that, that I want to show you as a demonstration. You will notice that there is no head tag here, there's no body tag here, there's no HTML tag here. This isn't a full, uh, fully formatted HTML document like you quote unquote should if you're putting this out into the production world or giving this to a client. Uh, but again, as I've told you before, uh, in the HTML world it is very forgiving from a technical standpoint so I don't actually have to put in all those additional tags for this web page to work so when I'm showing you a lot of these types of examples I'm going to strip out those, those that, that additional HTML code simply because I want you to focus on on what I am trying to show you and so here I'm just basically trying to show you the, this basic text formatting uh, so at the top here uh, we have the H tags so H1 uh, then we say this is heading one and then we close the H1 tag. So H1 is like the biggest, boldest uh, 
type of font that you're normally going to have. So this is, this is again, this is uh, the, the the tag you would use for for maybe the, the the name of a web page or maybe the name of a book. You know, the highest level. Uh, then you have H2, then you have H3, then you have H4, then you have H5, and you can go all the way down to H6. If you go past H6, uh, there is no formatting rule, so nothing happens to it. So you have H1 all the way through H6, and again, you can use this for let's say the title of a book, then the title of a chapter. Chapter, then the title of a section, then the title of a subsection, then the title of an article in the subsection, and the title of something below that, right? Um, so when you're using these heading tags, you're not going to be writing out a whole document in heading tags. These, these are they're, they're heading tags. <laughs> that's that's what they're for, right? So again, think about chapters, think about uh, uh, blog post page names, think about that thing, that type of thing. That's what we're going to be using the heading for. Uh, beyond that, then we're going to come down to the P tag, and so the P tag is simply P. Um, and this is the standard tag that you're going to be using in order to write paragraphs in your document. So uh, every time you have a paragraph in your document, it's going to be enclosed by the P tags. So you're going to type out a whole paragraph. When you get to the end, you're going to close a P. You go to the next paragraph, you're going to open a P, close a P, open a P, close a P, open a P, close a P, open a P, close a P. Um, so what this does is... Um, Remember, uh, in the HTML world, uh, the web browser doesn't read things based off of white space. So if I did this, everything would still show up on the same line. It does. It it. it it uh, modifies everything based off of these tags. And so basically what the P tag generally does is it breaks the line and then gives you a space between the different paragraphs. Uh, then we're gonna go down here. So we have another P tag and then I'm going to show you um, a bold example or a strong example. Uh, and so with this, basically if you're going to bold something, if you're going to italicize something, if you're going to underline something within the P tag, then you're going to do another tag. So this is strong, so the strong tag is for bold and then we're simply going to bold the word strong and then we're going to close the strong tab uh, tag then we're going to continue on with whatever we were saying and then we're going to close the paragraph tag uh, so basically this is how you can you can bold one word in a sentence uh, or in a paragraph so you're going to be using a strong tag in order to bold a word or a line something like that uh, then we go down here there's another p tag and then for italics use the em tag em then whatever you want it italicized then you close the em tag continue saying whatever you're going to say and then close the p tag uh, for underline, you use U, so it's the U tag, and so in this, underlined is going to be underlined, and then you're going to close the U tag, then you're going to continue on with whatever you're saying in the paragraph, and you're going to close the P tag. Then if you want a line break, so again, let's say if you're you're typing something, but you but you want to when you want to break a line, but you don't necessarily want it to be in an additional paragraph. Basically here, you simply use the BR tag. So there's no slash with it. It's simply the BR tag, and this will break the line. If we go over here and we double click on the fonts.html, so I've called this fonts.html, we can see how this opens up. So if we open this up, uh, this opens up in Safari since my, that's my default web browser. And so what we can see here is the H1 tag is heading one. The H2 tag is heading two. H3 is heading three. H4 is heading four. H5 is heading five. Uh, H6 is a tiny little H6, right? So this is how these heading tags look. You'll see they're big and they're bold. Again, it's for titling pages, titling things within, within a, a web page. Uh, then we're going to come down to a simple P tag example. So this is a P tag example here and this is just what it's going to look like when you close the p tag again it breaks the line and then it gives you a space and then we come to the strong example and then with a the strong example we can see that strong is in bold because it's within those strong tags but example the rest of the sentence isn't only what is within the tags is modified for the italics the same thing what is between the em tags is uh, italicized nothing else is with the u with the underlined tag we can see underlined is a uh is um, underlined nothing else is and then for the line break we can see line break an example and so basically we can see it just goes it breaks the line there and on the next line it keeps going so you can see when you end the p tag not only does it break the line but it gives you a space between the paragraphs where if you use the br um, tag for just a line break it breaks the line and then immediately starts typing underneath so it's not like double spaced or anything like that so again we can go here just to kind of 
Oh, just to kind of show you uh, that, you know, it's just simply whatever is within the tags is what gets modified. So we'll do that there and we'll do that uh, here. Uh, so this just is going to show you. So now, strong example, both of those words um, are going to be in bold. And underline example, both of those words are now going to be underlined, whereas everything else is the same. I simply do file, I do save. We go back to the web page and uh, we just simply hit refresh. And okay, so now we can see the entire sentence now is bolded um, and we can see the entire sentence now is underlined. So again, basically, Anything within the tags is formatted. Anything outside of the tags is not. Uh, we can, again, anytime you're going to be creating a web page, one of the things you want to think about doing is opening up the web page in, in multiple browsers just to make sure how it looks. So we're going to do open with, and let's say we're going to do Google Chrome now. And if we take a look at Google Chrome, Google Chrome is more or less identical. But it is a valuable thing is to be thinking about whenever you're going to be creating web pages, open up the web page in, in multiple different browsers. Uh, just to see how it looks. This is going to become more important when you start using CSS, cascading style sheets, when you start using JavaScript, that type of thing. That's when you're going to start to no notice more and more differences between the different web browsers. When you're doing basic HTML tags, it should be more or less identical. Uh, so this is basic example of how to use tags uh, for text formatting. Again, you have H1 through H6. These are for uh, these are for titles, basically the headings. Uh, we have the P tag. This is for the different paragraphs, uh, again, within your blog post or whatever else. The strong tag uh, allows you to bold words. EM tag allows you to italicize words. The U tag allows you to underline words. And then the BR tag, this allows you to do line breaks. So for whatever reason, you can break a line. And instead of having a uh, double spacing uh, between, the, between the next thing, it'll just go single space to the next line. And so that's a basic example of how HTML uh, font tags work. So there you go. Now you have a basic understanding of how the HTML tags work for basic text formatting. So you have heading one through six. So H1 through H6. Uh, those are, again, those are for headings, titles, you know, sections, subsections, that type of thing. Uh, when you go to actually write out uh, the full information on a web page, you would then use the P tag. That's for paragraphs. Um, then when you want to uh, bold, bold words, you use the strong tag. When you want to underline words, you use the U tag. When you want to italicize, size worlds, you use the EM tag. Um, and then when you want to do a line break, you, you simply use that BR tag. And so that gives you the basic ability to do text formatting. Now, to be clear, again, when you start getting into changing the color of text, when you start to get into changing the fonts of text, uh, the specific font size of text, that type of thing, that's where you're going to be using something called cascading style sheets. You can actually do some of that within HTML, but that's kind of like the old deprecated way of doing it. So I'm not going to show you that again at this point in time, if you're going to be doing any of that kind of font modification, it is much better to actually do it in CSS. Uh, and so that is the way that we're going to do it today. Again, what I showed you today in the example that I've given, um, I did not have the HTML tags. I did not have the head tags. I did not have the body tags. I did not have all the additional tags that would be required for a normal web page, simply because I want you to focus on specifically what I'm showing you. This is just something to keep in mind. So if you're going to actually be writing out a web page, again, to put into a production environment uh, for a customer or client, something like that, make sure you put the HTML, then you put the head, then you put the body, then you fill everything else out. But to be clear, if you're just trying to type up uh, some simple page, you don't actually need all of those additional tags, just one of those kind of things uh, to be thinking about. So as always, I enjoyed doing this class and I look forward to seeing you on the next one. If you like the content that I create, please think about going to elinethecomputerguy.com and becoming a member or donating. Please understand that all the educational videos are in front of the paywall. That includes the videos, that includes the notes, the diagrams, and the code example. All of that is freely available and in front of the paywall. But if you want to watch opinion videos or if you want to be able to comment, you do need to become a member. Membership is $5 a month or $60 a year and gives you access to those opinion videos and the ability uh, to comment. If you don't want to become a member, you just want to give a one-time uh, donation, there is also a donate button where you can do that. Please understand, in order to provide the education that I am, it does cost money.
servers cost money, equipment costs money, travel costs money. All of these things cost a reasonable amount of money. And the fact of the matter is, is YouTube's advertising program no longer supports creators the way that it used to. So if you want to these classes to continue to stick around and you find them to be valuable, please think about either becoming a monthly member or donating a few dollars for this project.